Good afternoon, everyone. All eyes on the USDA report, wheat spreads, corn futures, actual yield possibly on the number of acres planted, hail damaged corn in the exact same area that it snowed early last year, causing crop losses. Will it happen in the same place twice in two years? We'll see you next month. Snow still left in New Hampshire, shrinkflation small as the new medium in the UK. And with China just stating that we're heading into a 500 year cooling period, in my personal opinion, you're definitely gonna have to learn how to grow some of your own food indoor. As food prices rise, it'd be a great idea to be able to learn how to offset costs by growing your own fresh greens at home. Microgreens, micro sprouts. This is explained in my new book, Climate Revolution, with my co-author Bill Porter, about how cycles through history, going back thousands of years, shrinks grow seasons, or the amount of time that we get to grow food on the planet, that's shrinking like it does with every grand solar minimum, but there are solutions. Now remember just six weeks ago, the USDA dropped the ball giving the most fictitious figures that you've ever seen. They said that the amount of corn production in America was gonna increase 2%, although we've had the biggest floods ever recorded and the most non-planting acres ever since 1938. Yet the USDA said we were gonna increase by 2% the corn production. They crashed the markets during that report. So all eyes are on that, especially with the wheat spreads, the corn futures, and truly how much yield we're gonna get out of these fields that were not planted, the scrappy emergence, the horrible growing conditions that have stunted grain production across the United States. Hopefully they come clean and give us some real indication of where we're going with this. But we've seen again and again and again, all these stories of small farmers being decimated by hail. Here's another one, tapered corn crops. Hail damaged corn. This is what it looks like. And you say, oh, just so you can pick it up and just dust the ice off and then resell it, can't you? Well, let's take a look at what happens when you have hundreds and hundreds of acres crushed by hail. It actually broke through the ear down to the kernels. That's amazing how big the hail had to have been to do that. But then you can see inside it's just pulverized. I guess you could cut that off. Now, if you're going to recycle that, what would you do? And we're thinking about food here. You'd probably have to go through and cut the kernels out of there, maybe wash it once to get any dirt out or mud, and then try to use that as a soup or cook it or do something with it instead of just throwing the ear away. And the reason I'm focusing in there is because Alberta, in this same area last year, 2018, it snowed incredibly early, shrinking the grow season. Let's see if it happens again. This area seems to have had tumultuous weather all through the growing season since spring until now. Let's see if the early snows come for a second year in a row. If it is, this is an area that's going to continue to go offline in intensification as we come through this grand solar minimum. So if you're looking where crops might be lost in the total of the whole, you would start right here in Alberta and see if it's a trend. And then you can work your math back from there by province. And also, how many times have we heard the glaciers are melting, there are no, no more glaciers left? How about snowpack, not even a glacier, an area where there's not even glaciers, just snows in the winter, it stays there until it gets warm enough and then it melts. Snowpack, not glaciers. There should be no snowpack in this warmest year ever and how hot it's been apparently through the corporate media telling us it's a scorcher. How is there still snowpack up in New Hampshire? Although an interesting factoid, Tuckerman Ravine has the latest snow generally in the Northeast US, but it had melted pretty much every year until they go back in the records and look to see when was there snow that stayed around through all the way until the first, second week of August, even though it's been hot in the summer, all that snow didn't even melt from winter yet. 1922 to 1958. It's a weather cycle. It's not CO2. Now, why would snow suddenly come back to the same area and to survive longer after the melt season began? We were told snow would be a thing of the past. We're told it's the hottest year ever. So what's the driver that's not melting the snow? Because if it's so hot, the snow should have been gone. Or is it that there's so much snow now? And you say, well, that's a pretty far away glimpse. That doesn't look like much snow. Yeah, but it's enough for a snowboarder to go down here on it. And that was the whole thing. We were told it's so hot this summer. It's the hottest summer. And even Weather Channel putting out that August temperatures are going to be above normal. It's going to be a hot August. Yet where this same snowpack is from last year, it's in where it says 70s. So 70 degrees Fahrenheit should be melting snow that's at what? 32 degrees Fahrenheit? 
It just goes to show you there's something else amplifying wind anomalies and then here we are yet another one in the same exact spot so is the northeast u.s becoming an area that we would also look for intensification of the grand solar minimum again it comes down to the food you can put another coat on and stay warmer you can heat your home if the grid stays up you can heat your home and stay warm it's about the food that we can grow or not grow during the seasons that are allotted to us by the sun heating our planet or cooling our planet the sun decreases in activity we get a shorter growing season. That's not CO2. So over to the UK, small is the new medium. Costa shrinks cup sizes. The old on the top, the new on the bottom. So now instead of when you see buy four, get one free, now it's buy four, get three because we shrunk the other quarter percent out of your buy power. Now you notice they shrunk everything standardly four ounces, but then you'll notice the price rises are all 10 pence. That's what I mean by food price rises in smaller quantities. Now you can go without having a coffee, but when it comes down to having a piece of meat in this same equation took place percentage wise, price wise, and your eggs and your milk and your flour and everything you eat, how would this affect what you can spend in the rest of the economy? Because everybody eats on the planet. So if this is your equation, do it for everything. And then, okay, net, let's do 50% off, but double the price and see how this would affect the economy of the planet. If they're gonna use this as the mathematical equation, plug a bunch of stuff in there yourself and see what comes out and then see how you think that would affect the greater spending economy of the planet. Like really, how would that shift our society if everybody starts spending so much money on food and they're pulling out of other things? Walk yourself through that mind experiment. Sponsor for tonight's video, My Patriot Supply, long-term food storage. Links in the description box below. You can check out what the new Mylar packaging looks like.